The coordinate system that we're most familiar with, the standard XY coordinate system, is called the Cartesian coordinate system, or sometimes the rectangular coordinate system. And this is a coordinate system where if I want to identify some point on the plane, I tell you what its, what its horizontal component is, and I tell you what its vertical component is, and that allows you to figure out where a point is supposed to be. But this is not the only coordinate system out there, and it turns out that, that other coordinate systems can sometimes, depending on your problem, be much more naturally expressed in a different coordinate system than the Cartesian coordinate system. And of these other coordinate systems, by far the most important is polar coordinates. So the way a polar coordinates works is, let me suppose I have some point here, and if we were operating in the Cartesian world, we would give it the x and y coordinates, the horizontal and vertical components, and we'd give it a pair xy. However, another way that I could specify this point, that I could tell you how to write that dot down without giving just a horizontal and a vertical component is I can give you two other pieces of information. One of them is the distance from the origin out to the point. I'm going to call this distance r. And the other piece of information I could give you is what the angle with respect to the positive portion of the x-axis is. I can give you that theta value. So now imagine I, I give you this theta in the r. You'd say, okay, well, which, which theta value am I in? And then what is my length in that point? What is my radius? And that should tell you an instruction of how to go out to the exact same point that the instruction x comma y tells you to go to. In fact, the polar coordinates and the Cartesian coordinates are related. For instance, if I know what the r and the theta is, this forms a triangle. And so I can actually tell you what the x and the y is. In, in particular, this component here, that's the x, is always going to be given by r cosine of theta. We know how to do the trigonometry on this. And then the y component, that's going to be given by r sine of theta. So this little bit of trigonometry allows me to relate my Cartesian or my rectangular coordinates with my polar coordinates. In particular, the x is going to be equal to r cosine of theta and the y is equal to r sine of theta. So in other words, if, if I have any r and any theta, I can tell you what the x, y is. I can translate from, from this new coordinate system back into my familiar one. But I can also go the other way around. I can use the Pythagorean identity that, that cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1 to give me that the radius is the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then I can also take a, a quotient. I can take y divided by x, and that's going to give me tangent theta. And so rearranging, theta is equal to arctangent of y over x. So, so this allows me, if I have my Cartesian coordinates, if I know what my x and y are, then I can get out my polar coordinates, my r and my theta. However, it's important to note something. It's important to note here that tangent of theta is going to be pi periodic. And what I mean by an expression like saying it's pi periodic is that if I have any value that satisfies this equation, then that value plus pi, plus 2 pi, plus 3 pi, and generally plus any n pi where n is an integer is going to all give the same value. So this is not uniquely specified. Also, it's kind of possible that your radius, when, when you're using your Pythagorean formula, there's a square root there, so there should be a plus and a minus in front of it. So there's a couple different possibilities, and, and we're going to see in the next example that we often try to write this in the sort of standard form with a positive r and with a theta being between 0 and 2 pi. So in this example, I've got some point that's given to us in rectangular. So my, I want to figure out what the polar coordinates are for this rectangular point. And the first point is just going to be that r. I'm going to choose specifically this positive square root here. That's going to be my convention. Is going to be the x-coordinate squared, so the square root of 3 with a minus sign in front, all squared, plus 1 squared. This is just the same thing as the square root of 4, and therefore a radius of 2. That's the easy one. The slightly more complicated one is to figure out what the theta value is. So theta is arctangent of y over x. So arctangent of 1 over minus the square root of 3. So to compute this value, I need to remind myself of one of the canonical triangles. It is the 
one, two, root three triangle, and that occurs for the value of theta equal to pi over six. So if I think about this, then what I have is that tangent of pi over six is one divided by square root of three. And so arc tangent of one over pi over three is equal to pi over six. The only problem is I've got this negative sign here. And so my general answer for theta is that it is going to be equal to minus pi divided by six. And then because of the periodicity, plus n pi. So for any integer value n, this is going to give you a solution to the formula theta is equal to arctan of one over minus the square root of three. So now the final step here is I need to make a choice of which of these different values of theta such that it corresponds with the positive root r and that I'm choosing a theta value between zero and two pi. That's going to be our convention for the sort of canonical way to write down the polar coordinates. So if I think in Cartesian for a moment, and I want to figure out where this point is, so this is like an x value of some negative number minus square root three, which is a little bit bigger than one, and positive one, so it's, it's some point something like that. So when I think about sort of roughly what my r should look like, it, it's some value that's a little bigger than pi over two. So therefore, I am going to choose to have the particular pair the positive of the two roots for r, that's going to be two. And then I'm going to take minus pi over six plus a single copy of pi. So that's going to go to five pi divided by six. And so that this angle that I have over here is five pi divided by six. And it kind of makes sense that works out because this is a value just a little bit less than pi. Pi would be if it was exactly horizontal. So five pi over six seems like the value that's nearby that would make sense. And so this is my particular pairing. And it's true, uh, if I wanted to, I could make this minus two and leave the minus pi over six, that'd be fine, it just wouldn't be standard.